On to a story, the, a bit of an update on a story we brought you last night, actually. The former vice chancellor of Glasgow University will head the independent review on allegations of data manipulation at the world renowned Climate Research Unit at the University of East Anglia in Norwich. Professor Phil Jones has stood down from his post as unit director after computer hackers claimed emails questioned the validity of data on climate change. The university today announced Samir Russell will head the inquiry. Police are also investigating. Next, the youngsters across the region dicing with death by using imitation firearms. Well, as it gets more and more difficult to tell the difference between replica and genuine guns, police say armed officers often have just seconds to decide whether a weapon is real or if it's fake. And there's now growing concern that teenagers are running a real risk of being shot. Martin Stew reports. One of these three guns is real. Can you spot which one? Go on, guess. Quick. It's this one. A Beretta pistol. Were you right? Well, armed police in Essex who get called out to reports of youngsters with guns have just a fraction of that time to work out if the threat is real. It's extremely concerning to the officers. They do go through rigorous training before they can um, go on the streets of Essex and police. But the decisions they have to make is which one of these is the real firearm, which one of these is the BB gun. Now, this is one of the replica BB guns. It looks and feels exactly like the real thing, but the reason the police are saying not to buy one of these for your children at Christmas is they could find themselves faced with a situation like this. Oh, police! Put the gun down, mister! The problem of misidentification is a growing one. Two years ago, there was just one arrest in Essex for possessing an illegal firearm. This year, there have already been 12, and police say things are getting worse. This is a recording of an emergency call made earlier this year. You call you through to the police? Yeah, hello. Um, I'm walking down Tapping High Street um, and there's some guy just pointing the gun at everyone. So, I mean, it's metal. I don't know if it's real or not. Right, whereabouts in the High Street are you? Um, it's just, he's just outside Burger King sitting on a bench. Right, OK. And he's, you say he's just pointing a gun. What sort of...? It's, I don't know. It's like a little yeah. revolver sort of thing. I don't, it's, it looks metal to me, but... Okay. The boy carrying the weapon was arrested by armed police. His gun turned out to be a cigarette lighter. This shop in Ipswich sells replica weapons. Since 2002, all BB guns sold in the UK have to either be clear or brightly coloured. The shop owner says that makes misidentification a thing of the past. But air pistols can still be black or metallic. Police say they don't want to be killjoys, but buy your loved ones one of these for Christmas, and if they're not careful, they could be facing one of these. And their guns are real. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Chelmsford. You have been warned, right? It's 30 minutes past six. Do stay with us this Thursday evening. Here's what's the... Well, some more news now from closer to home. And a service of thanksgiving has been held at Norwich Cathedral to honour members of the Light Dragoons who lost their lives in Afghanistan this year. The Dragoons arrived home to Swanton Morley in Norfolk last month after a six-month tour of duty in Helmand Province. Six of the regiment were killed during their deployment. Jim Rice reports. A grand setting for a solemn occasion. A service of thanksgiving to mark the Light Dragoons' return from their deployment in Afghanistan on Operation Herrick and to formally recognise the bravery and sacrifice of the fallen. It will give us an opportunity to uh, give thanks also for those who did uh, come back safely. Uh, we'll also have the opportunity uh, to reflect upon our successes over the summer in Afghanistan and to thank very much the county of Norfolk and all the communities and organisations who have shown us so much support. A month ago, as the Dragoons' families welcomed them back to their Swanson Morley base, the mood was one of relief. Today, thoughts turn to remembrance of the six members of the regiment who lost their lives in Afghanistan. Lance Corporal Richard Brandon, Craftsman Anthony Lombardi, Trooper Philip Lawrence, Trooper Christopher Whiteside, Lance Corporal David Dennis and Lance Corporal Nigel Moffat. In a private ceremony today, the families of those six men were each presented with the Elizabeth Cross by the former head of the army, General Sir Richard Dannett. It's the first time we're going to meet all the families from the lads who fell and then for the families to come back to the regiment uh, where their sons served, show them around, show them how they lived, uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Today's private commemoration will tomorrow become public celebration as 300 soldiers from the Light Dragoons parade through the centre of East Dereham, accompanied by the band of the Parachute Regiment. 
More than 3,000 people are expected to attend. Jim Rice, Anglia News. The government is insisting there's no food safety risk after pigs on a Norfolk farm tested positive for swine flu. Tests showed pigs on the unnamed farm have contracted the M1H1 strain of the disease. It's the first case in England and follows five in Northern Ireland. DEFRA say this strain has not been shown to be transmissible to humans. There's absolutely no risk to the public because pork properly handled and cooked presents no safety risk whatsoever. Uh, the pigs will be held on the farm until they're healthy. But we thought it was important just to report this and that's what we've done. An appeal by two brothers to try and get their sentences reduced after they were convicted of killing a wealthy banker in Norwich was adjourned in London today. Tom and Ben Cowles were jailed for seven years and seven and a half years for the manslaughter of Frank McGarrahan, who'd intervened to stop a street fight. Well, from the appeal court, Emma Baker sent us this report. Well, we've heard a number of complicated legal arguments in court today. This all centres around the case of Tom and Ben Cowles, who were sentenced to seven years and seven and a half years, respectively, for the manslaughter of Frank McGarrahan. Now, today, their defending barristers have been in court arguing that those sentences should be reduced. Now, just to remind you a little bit about the background of this case, Frank McGarrahan was on a night out with family in September 2008 in Norwich when he became involved in an altercation with Tom and Ben Cowles. Now, he was hit several times, fell on conscious and died the following day. Now the Cowles brothers defending barristers have been in court arguing that the sentences should be reduced. They say there were no real aggravating features. It was not a sustained attack and they also point out that both the brothers did plead guilty to manslaughter. Tom Cowles' defending barrister also adds that these were two good lads from a good home. Now the barrister working on behalf of the Crown Prosecution Service disputes those facts. He says there was in intent to cause harm on that night and the sentences should stand. Now, uh, both families were in court today. The parents of Ben and Tom Cowles were in court today, along with members of family from Frank McGarrahan's family. They've listened to all the details, along with the five judges who heard both arguments. They have now retired to consider their decision. Emma Baker reporting from the High Court in London. Two cousins from Essex extradited to Cyprus to serve a three-year prison sentence for the manslaughter of a teenage moped rider are being held in solitary confinement for their own safety. Michael Binnington from Great Totten near Malden and Luke Atkinson from Whittam were flown to Cyprus on Tuesday. Their solicitor says the case has caused a lot of strong feeling locally. The pair were passengers in a car which was involved in a crash which killed a 17-year-old three years ago. Two people have been charged with more than 40 offences in relation to the illegal importation of endangered tortoises. Four tortoises were found packed in luggage at Stansted Airport. 42-year-old Michael Gates and Carol Wormley from East London were arrested at the airport after arriving on a flight from Corfu. They're due to appear at Chelmsford Magistrates Court tomorrow. A taxi company in Ipswich has been holding a free cab day and inviting passengers to make a donation to local charities instead of paying their fare. The fundraising day took place in Ipswich yesterday. They raised nearly £150, which will be donated to the St Elizabeth Hospice and the East Anglian Children's Hospices.